Okay, this is uh, just a video about my workflow when it comes to GPS. Um, I work in the GPS industry, so uh, just about how I how I find my locations uh, before an adventure ride or a four x four trip. How I get them into uh, some sort of format that I can save and manipulate, and then how do I get them onto a GPS? So <clears throat> I use all um, HEMA maps generally. Um, I've got a Mac here. This has got uh, this is Basecamp up at the moment, um, but I also use um, a Windows. I use um, Parallels to run Windows. So this is Aussie Explorer with the HEMA maps. Um, I use that as well. Let's get that out of the way. Um, and I, that also matches up. I like the fact that it matches up with the same maps that's in a map book. So no matter what I use, all the maps are the same and uh, there's no confusion about uh, you know, roads and, and uh, different formats and different icons. I then put it into, this is basically a, uh, a tablet. It's homemade, uh, runs Aussie Explorer for um, Android and, um, and HEMA maps that I bought from HEMA. So I'll go through how I find my spots and how I get my spots from the software to to uh, that GPS. Just interesting thing, I've got HEMA maps up here. Um, uh, sorry, I've got uh, Basecamp up here at the moment. And this is the difference between uh, different maps when using Basecamp. I also have a Garmin GPS as a backup and I sometimes use Basecamp. So this is the Shonky maps and as you can see here, there's quite a bit of detail on tracks. This is the standard turn by turn stuff. Um, as you can see, there's there's the road and, and, and no detail here. And uh, I've got Shonky maps and there's lots of detail of, um, so that you can see there's a mine mine here. If I go back to the standard turn by turn maps, all that disappears. So that just gives you an idea of the different maps. Okay, so, um, We'll uh, minimise base camp. So what I normally do is I use uh, Google Earth. So uh, as you can see here, <clears throat> I use Google Earth and also um, uh, Apple Maps. So what I normally do is I get uh, ideas from the web or, or someone mentions an idea and I, and I go and look for it. So just an example was someone told me there was some, some uh, interesting ruins and stuff just the other side of Esperance here. So Esperance is down here, and um, and the station ruins are out here. So I go and look for those station ruins, and try and find where they might be. So I think that they're probably uh, out here somewhere. So if I keep on looking, and I just look for anything that'll tell me, anything that'll give me an idea of where they might be. So I think. There you go. You can see here is some interesting, some interesting um, little spots. So if you zoom into some of these, so there is one there. So I think this, as you can see, that's quite an outcrop with some infrastructure. And if you look closely enough, there'll be some um, ruins in here. So then all I do is um, I will stick a place mark on here in Google. And I will call it something. So we'll call this ruins. And I uh, just save that. So I, at the moment, I'll save it into temporary. And so it just sits in the temporary over here on the on the left. And, and there's a lat long. And if you want to know what the lat long is, you can go into the the properties or the get info, and the lat long is in there. So <clears throat> I just continue to do that until I find. Um, things that I want. One interesting thing is um, Apple Maps, which comes on the Apple, obviously, if you don't have an Apple, you won't have access to it, but that actually has sometimes quite a bit better resolution. So I've already pre-set up. Here is the, the, uh, that same spot, but the Apple Maps has uh, a little bit more resolution, a little bit more clarity than, uh, than Google. So I often use uh, Apple Maps, especially uh, in the wheat belt of Western Australia, the Apple Maps is quite a bit more 
uh, detail. So um, we'll go back out and we'll find there is some other ruins out here that I know about. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe here. Let's have a look. Yeah, here it is. Here's one looks like some ruins here. So we'll add a place mark to that. So we'll just call it ruins two. Ruins two. And you've got your lat long. And as you can see over here on the left, we've got ruins one and ruins two. Someone also told me about 70 k's. The other side of the border, there was something really interesting to see. So we'll go to the border, which is here. We zoom in. And in here, so that's about 70 k's. Sometimes I'll use the ruler. Um, to work that out, so I will get the ruler. Oh, I'll get the ruler. Where did you go? I'll drag that. There it is, and I'll just drag a. Yeah, it's about 70 k's. Uh, 30, 40, 50. If we go a bit further, use mouse navigation. I want to clear that. We'll go 70. There we go. So it's out here somewhere. So I thought they said it was about 70 Ks. And so we just find, we'll find out here there is a here it is here. So someone told me about 70 k's north of the highway, which was around about here. There was a station uh, homestead of ruins. So it looks like that's it there. So and they told me there was cars. So there's all the cars. And then they told me at the out the back there was a sinkhole. So if we there's the sinkhole there. So we can also tag that, drag that, and call that station. And we'll save that in the list. So we've got three things that we would want to see. So once I get all those, um, once I find those and, uh, and log them all in, what I do then is I export these as a w uh, a km kml or a kmz file uh, for importation into um, other programs so let's do that we'll save uh, save place as and i'm going to put it in we'll just put it in desktop and i'll do it as a kml um, places we'll call it save it and so now, once I go onto the desktop, there should be a places.kml. There it is there. So then what I normally do is open up um, the HEMA maps. And we'll bring that in. So this is running in a um, emulator. So we'll open up HEMA maps and we import that. There's nothing on here, as you can see. And so we'll load that in, import Google KML file. And we've got to go to the Macintosh uh, desktop. And there it is there. And as you can see straight away, it's, it's actually found the, um, it's actually uh, converted and placed those waypoints onto the map. And there you can see the station. So what this does is allows you then to to see these things actually on your map and, and work out how you're going to get there. So what I did with this particular one, to make the, the trip a bit interesting, I actually took this old road, the old air highway road to the station rather than take the main road. So it's this just gives you an idea of uh, how you can get there and, and, and for the rest of your trip. And also down the back of Esperance, it's actually put the two um, ruins 
they're on the map so you know how far it is to them and, and you can navigate to them. And so once I have them on here, then I just go through and I can uh, work out how far things are, how much fuel, etc., whatever needs to be worked out. So once I have all those done, I then save them as a um, uh, save it to a waypoints file, and then um, anywhere that you want to save them. So we'll save them to the desktop as uh, no, I'll actually save them back to the Macintosh. Um, because I want to put them onto another device. So we'll save them onto the desktop as places.waypoint um, and go save. So that, if we find here, so here on the, on the desktop of the Mac is the places uh, waypoint. So from here we want to get them onto, onto a device like this or a Garmin, and we'll do both. So I want to get them onto here. So what I've got to do is I have a, a um, USB that fits this device and um, I'll plug that into here and I'll put the, uh, the places onto the USB and then load them into here. So I'll uh, just get that set up. So what we do is plug it in there and we copy the places.waypoint from here onto the device. So we should be able to go copy we then find the um, SD card, uh, maps, data, and you can see there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there. So then we paste the places dot waypoint in there. And if we go down to P, that should be there somewhere. So there's the places dot waypoint there. So then we can pull that out. Then um, all we need to do is go into the operation menu, um, waypoints, um, import waypoints, find the right one, which is places, which is that one there. That should be imported. We'll go finish. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but the ruins in the station, I'll just zoom in. down here should be down here somewhere oh, there they are. so there's the ruins and so then I've got them on the map and I can um, navigate to them so that's effectively my workflow for from getting uh, finding my waypoints to getting them onto my device the other way you can do it if you've got Basecamp and you've got a Garmin is Basecamp will also import Basecamp will also import um, uh, KML files. So if we find a collection, um, let's uh, let's see what we got here. So if I do a new collection, maybe um, new list. I've got test. If I then import into this list file, import into test um, desktop places.kml, it then will show up. It will then show up here. So if I was to, there it is there. So as you can see, it's imported the, the ruins waypoint into um, Basecamp, which can then be imported into the Garmin. So if you had a Garmin, that's what you can do. I use it as a backup, so I do that as well. So, um, and if you zoom back out enough, and as you can see also the detail there of Shonky Maps, there's ruins too up there. If I was to go back to the normal map, You'll see there's just no there's just no um, detail there so that's effectively it as far as uh, workflow goes um, 
and uh, yeah, I hope this has been helpful. Um, any questions, that's, that's fine. Just put them in the comments. And uh, yeah, happy hunting for uh, places to find.